Hi Siri, I'm looking for a new podcast, one that preferably is hosted by a UF Hall of Famer, uh, one that airs every weekday that would bring me everything I need to know about the Florida Gators, including news, analysis, and opinions. Siri, is there such a show? Have you heard of Pod Up with Matthews in the morning on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, or any podcast platform? Oh my gosh, why didn't I think of that? You have Hall of Famer Shane Matthews has a show every weekday. I'm going to go check it out tomorrow. Thanks, Siri. Good morning. It's a live edition. It's a hump day edition of Pot with Matthews in the morning from the Crime Prevention Security System Studio. It's large enough to serve you, small enough to care. We'll have JC here momentarily. We're going to have Tricia Garzon from the Gainesville quarterback join us towards the end of the program, give us some updates on what's going on there. Uh, If you missed it last night, the Gators win a midweek game against the Rattlers of FAMU. Tags hits a 491-foot home run, and uh, they head to Missouri this weekend. Um, Not a whole lot else going on. Uh, The NIT games, if you watch those, Seton Hall wins, Indiana State wins. Uh, They will play for the NIT championship. Uh, We got a lot to talk about today. Let's welcome in the one and the only corn dog. Thank you. On the Titan MR hotline, courtesy of Comfort Tent. What's happening? Well, QB, you know, yes, I saw that uh, Jack is hot, man. He's the guy that uh, everybody's talking about with the Gator baseball team. And I expect a big weekend up in columbia missouri this weekend so that's you know missouri is not a really good baseball team so at least record wise so I, I i think florida can keep that sec momentum going this could be a good week um qb did you know that last night let me get in some major league baseball real quick can you name me one of the three unbeaten teams still in baseball the yankees lost five uh they, they lost last night they're five and one but give me one of the three unbeatens in baseball can you name them uh, I mean, I can guess. I have not watched one pitch of Major League okay. Baseball. Well, I know the Braves are not Braves are, are not undefeated. I do know that. I right. guess I could cheat and look it up, but I'm not going to do that. Okay. I'm, I'm so, kind of butchering your trivia question. Well, the Pirates are undefeated. The Tigers are undefeated, and the Brewers. Now, give me the two oh, wow. teams. Give me one of the two teams that has not won a game yet. They're o o four. I do know. I do know that the Miami Marlins. And that's right. The Marlins and the New York Mets, owned by a hedge fund manager. Just another example of a professional sports franchise owned by somebody on Wall Street that has that is clueless. The guy at the Carolina Panthers is clueless, and the guy Steve Cohen at the New York Mets is clueless. He's a hedge fund manager, but they got billions of dollars, so they're not totally clueless. <laughs> they got lots of money. Well, they, their team sucks. Yeah, they st- so they're terrible. They still, they still have about 155 games to go. So let's they, let's wait and see. Uh, I, I know the uh, we are family Pittsburgh Pirates. My man Frank Frangie up in Jacksonville, a huge Pirate fan, grew up in Pittsburgh. Uh, he's got to be excited, as he says, "You can't win them all if you don't win the first." That's it. Five, I guess. And you yeah, can't birdie so, every hole unless you birdie the first one, QB. Very true. Very true. Uh, Reggie on Facebook Live brought to you by Metal Law says, man, the people complaining about the score yesterday against FAMU is hilarious. They act like the other teams aren't supposed to score. Yeah, I mean, look, whatever. We we can talk about all this. We won't. Well, Um, QB, I I got something. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I I keep interrupting you. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, it's fine. I mean, they just – like I, I, I try to tell people, it's just like in football or basketball. The last time I checked, the opposing teams give scholarships, they have booster clubs, and they do have coaches that watch tape and try to win baseball, football, basketball games. Sure about that? I think too many people people (laughs) just think the Gators are supposed to win and dominate everything. That ain't the case, folks. (laughs) Well, no. Kimmy, I, I got to tell you, though, this is what's irritating me. I was watching uh, the other day. Maybe it was yesterday's show you had. You know, everybody's talking about these damn cars that these kids are driving. You know, Trevor ETA. I was watching Edgar. That's who it was. Edgar Thompson with you. And they're talking about all these cars that everybody's driving, these kids that are spending all this ridiculous, this ridiculous amount of money on these cars, these Bentleys, these uh, Mercedes, these Beamers, these Rolls Royce. 
You know, I, I, I tell you the real tragedy here isn't that they're buying these cars or getting this money. To me, the tragedy is, actually it is, buying these cars. It's not that they're getting the money. You know, somebody is not giving these kids advice. So I'm going to tell you, everybody in the world right now who's watching this, to call John Cornell at Cornerstone Financial Group and let me help you kids get your future figured out because you're one Achilles tendon pop or one ACL from watching your valuation tank. And if you throw your money in a stupid car, you're going to really wish you hadn't because your future is not guaranteed. So let's go ahead and say this. Instead of buying a Bentley, the next kid that gets a million dollars or whatever, give John Cornell a call at Cornerstone Financial Group here in Gainesville, Florida, and I'm going to secure your future, okay? I'm going to secure your future at 18 or 19 years old so that you don't go throwing it away on a depreciating asset that might be worth half of what you paid for it in about a month after you buy it. So let's just do that, okay? I'm just getting that out there. It's a shameless plug, but it's really helpful because nobody's talking to these poor kids and giving them good uh, financial sound advice because they're out there buying these stupid cars. I don't care if it's a Land Rover or a Bentley or whatever it is. You are not handling your money the right way. Now, maybe that's just some of your money. And if that's the case, good for you. But you need to sock some money away, kids. You got to start thinking about your future because nothing in sports, absolutely nothing, unless you sign a guaranteed contract is guaranteed. So, yeah, that's yeah, my advice. It's, it's crazy. <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's crazy from the vehicles that are being driven. There, there's that's no right. question about that. That's right. Nobody's okay. talking to them this way. That's just bad advice. No, they, 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 JC, they are. They have plenty of well, financial advice over there, but they don't listen because that's, everybody okay. Okay. wants to drive fair. these fancy okay. cars for whatever that's reason. Fair. I don't get fair. it. That's fair. Um, I'll give you that. Okay. I don't want to slam everybody here. No, they, they have financial advice. I, I know that for a fact. Now, it's still their choice to go buy a $190,000 vehicle or how much a Bentley SUV and a ro uh, Range Rover cost. But <laughs> anyway, <laughs> enough of that. Enough of that. It's, you know, let's go win some football games. Um, That's true. Speaking of football, we have a text on the Titan of our text line from Danny. He says, with the NFL draft coming up, who would y'all take first? Would you take Caleb? I guess he's talking about quarterbacks. He says Caleb yeah. Williams, Drake May, or Jaden Daniels. I'll let yeah. you go first, JC. Who would you take? I would take Jaden Daniels, um, but I don't think you can go wrong with any of them. And I certainly think Caleb Williams is going to be the guy they take. But I would go with Jalen Daniels. He proved it to me last year that he can do everything. And he's probably, in my opinion, the most accurate passer of the three, even though you really can't. You can't really say I, I, I wouldn't think because they're all very, very good. But Jalen Daniels won the Heisman Trophy last year for a reason. He played on a mediocre football team. And without Jaden Daniels, the LSU Tigers win five games max. So to me, it's Jaden Daniels, and then it's uh, Caleb Williams, and then it's Drake May, only because I think Caleb Williams, with his legs, can do more things than Drake May. And that's where the game is going, flat out. But the Bears are probably going to take Caleb Williams. And if they do that, um, you know, I think it's an upgrade from the guy they let go to Pittsburgh for a song. They literally just let Justin Fields go for a song. So they're going to take Caleb Williams. But since you asked me the question, my pick would be Jaden Daniels. Um, you know, honestly, I haven't really thought much about this. I think it depends on what kind of system is being run by whatever team. Uh, but I think those three three guys, you can't go wrong. I think they're all really, really talented. Um, in different ways. So I'm going to avoid the question right now, maybe answer it later on well, getting closer to the draft. The but, well, wait a minute. You asked me the question, so why don't you answer the question too? You want well, me to Well, I answer? think the, the Bears get the first pick, correct? Yeah. They're going to take Caleb Williams. Okay, that's but what I, I just think, said. But I, that's I think, not what you I asked. Think the world of Jay, I think the world of Jaden Daniels. I, but but I, I'm, like I said, I think all three of these kids are going to be stars in the National Football League. Okay. I think I think they're they're no they're, they can't they can't miss players in my opinion. I agree. With um, that. I'm not a guy who sits around in a in a uh, basement and watch tape on these guys. I'm going by what I've seen them do in college football that I think can translate to the next level because I think all three of them are excellent throwers of the football, and that's the that's the number one key. Uh, you know, I think Kayla Williams has a lot of that 
Pat Mahomes uh, run around, make plays, crazy, crazy plays. Uh, Drake May's more athletic than you think. He's a huge kid. He can run. And then we saw what Jaden Daniels did in the Southeastern Conference. I think he's a, uh, I think he is a much better Lamar Jackson because he can throw the ball better than Lamar. So that's my quick assessment of, of not even watching tape, JC. What do you think about that? All right. Well, okay. That's fair. I, I mean, I think we all know what these kids are capable of, at least on the college level. On the pro level, we all know it's a different ball game. But with the way the game is being played these days and with the way these guys are drafting quarterbacks, um, these guys fit the mold of what they're looking for, in my opinion. And I just, again, reiterate that Daniels is the only reason LSU was even bowl eligible last year, if you ask me. I thought they stunk. And without Daniels, they don't win anything. So to me, you know, you're going to the Chicago Bears, who are, I think, trying to improve, and they are getting better players uh, in the offseason here, but they're still the Bears. I, I don't know if they can win that division with Green Bay and Detroit and Minnesota. So uh, it should help them, though. Uh, with regardless of who they take, and, and you, you, know, you can't go wrong with Williams. It's going to be a fun draft to watch, though, QB, because we've got a lot of quarterbacks here and we've got a lot of teams in need, and, you know, the big names are out there. It's, it's like every year in April, but I think this year adds a little bit. There's a little bit more excitement to it because of the quarterback situations. Yeah. Uh, text on the Titan on our text line uh, from Gator uh, 1216 says, I'm hoping we take a look at the 7-1 center from FAU that was the leader for – of their final four run last year. Golden loves height and rebounding. He's our guy. Uh, I know the kid you're talking about, I think his last name is Golden, by the way. Uh, I don't know if he's in the portal or not. Um, speaking of the transfer portal, the big kid, gosh, what is his name? The big kid from Colorado that wore us out down low, JC. Yeah. You remember him? Yeah. He, uh, he, started, he, he started his career at TCU, transferred to Colorado. He is in the portal and has – committed to Syracuse oh uh, so I saw that yeah so he's on the move and then uh I think we talked about it yesterday Gator women's basketball lost Rendall the, the girl from Denmark she's in the portal um so that's kind of where where we are there uh back to baseball uh you know a lot of people JC we talked on this program have been upset with baseball pitching you know the Gators are pitching more freshmen than any other school in the country Right. Uh, but you could be LSU right now, JC. I mentioned this yesterday. I don't know if you're aware. Of LSU's lost six of the last seven games. I know. And they lost Monday. They lost Monday night at home to Southern, Southern. University, the, ja ja the Jaguars. Jaguar. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's a hard, it's a hard fall when you lose all your studs from a national championship team and bring back some guys that you think can fill it in. And well, they're right still ranked in the top. They're still ranked. They are. You know, they're they're a good team. They're just gonna, they're just when you play in the SEC, you're going to lose. You're going to have a little losing streak at some point. Uh, they're there, and they are showing us that right now. But um, I think the team uh, to beat right now, if you look at it in a very premature kind of way, is Arkansas. And Arkansas is one of those schools that always gets close and just can't get across the line. Suffered the most heartbreaking way to lose a college world series on a routine 99.9 percent .9 play that should have been made for a college world series championship that was not made a pop up to the first baseman so dave van horn has been a great coach he should have a championship under his belt right now as should arkansas but they don't yet but it seems like to me year in and year out they are in omaha so that to me is the team to beat at this very early point in the season Yep. Uh, a couple of YouTubers that came in last night um, from James says, clearly Buddy doesn't watch softball. In my opinion, the softball team is killing it. Go Gators. Yeah, the softball team is having a tremendous year. 31-5, and five, big series this weekend. What, they play what, tonight, I think, against Stetson. What was his issue with the softball team? Did he not think they were winning the games they should win? Because they won 31 of them. So which, what was he actually specifically talking about that didn't make him feel very confident about the team right now? He just says they're not, they're not dominant. Uh, I don't well, know. Uh, I kind of agree. It, they, they played really good softball this year. They got great well, pitching, and they got good, good bats in their lineup. Uh, okay. It's a team that can go a long ways. Um, yeah. Here's here's a YouTuber from Justin. He says, golf isn't a sport. It's an activity like pool and darts. 
<laughs> not an ounce of athleticism is needed. Imagine calling John Daly a professional athlete. Okay, so let me ask you this. <laughs> what would he, Tiger I, he probably he's probably never played golf is the thing. Well, I've heard people QB. This is funny you you read that because I I also play tennis. And I've heard tennis guy because I, I tell him I say, you know, I can't make it. In, you know, I gotta go play golf. I gotta go play golf. That's not a sport. I said, well, what? tell me why you think it's not a sport. And they really didn't give me any good reasons, but there are many tennis players out there that don't think golf's a sport either. Even though you have to use your hands and your eyes and your mind and your legs and your hips and your shoulders, but it's not a sport. Because hitting a little white ball about an inch wide in diameter is easy, right? So it, when their, defin their definition of sports must be – you know, if you're not an Olympic athlete, then you're not really an athlete, right? It's just the most ludicrous thing I've ever heard. Somebody who actually participates in competitive sports say that golf is not a sport. It is a complete misunderstanding of the game, uh, uh, which, by the way, Michael Jordan, who I guess did play a sport and is athletic, he said golf was the hardest thing he'd ever done. You tell me why that's not a sport. If it's hard to do, if not a lot of people can do it, if the few people that can do it for millions of dollars make millions of dollars because there are only a few of them that can do it at that level, how is it not a sport when you're using your hands, your shoulders, your arms, your legs, and your eyes, and your mind? You tell me what's not athletic about that. I, I, don't, I guess the definition has different meanings to different people. No, I, it's definitely a sport. I mean, it's it's extremely hard. Uh, obviously, the, all day. the texture may have never played or can't hit a ball. Live a healthier lifestyle with our full, flavorful smoothies and our amazing food, Tropical Smoothie. When you eat better, you feel better. we got JC on the Titan on Hotline, courtesy of Comfort Temp. We're going to have Trisha Garzon from the Gainesville Quarterback Club. Talk about what's going on with the uh, Gainesville Quarterback Club. Should be interesting. Um, text from the Titan Mark text line here. Golf is uh, an activity. Finally, a midweek. This yeah, is finally guys. a midweek win. Hope the mid-Missouri series are not trap games for the Gators. Tigers are so-so this year. Gators need to take it to them each game. Yeah, it's a big weekend. We need to sweep those jokers for sure. I agree with that. Um, oh, boy. I just lost my – I'm, uh, I'm reading some of these, uh, these uh, missives here on YouTube. <laughs> it's making me laugh. <laughs> But, you know, one thing Gator Josh says here from Mississippi, and we love him, and we love Mississippi, where I will be tomorrow, where you are now. By the way, is the weather okay up there, QB? Um, Beautiful. He says, uh, love hearing some positive news coming out of spring on Graham Mertz and the offense working on deep balls. Maybe they listen to the show, QB. Uh, I, I bet Billy. Billy has already been in like multiple meetings starting probably around 5:30 a.m. He probably got a little jog on the treadmill. And then, then he goes up to his eight. office. Then he goes up to his office, gets pours a little coffee, kicks his feet up on his desk, <laughs> and has our show on. I, I bet that, I guarantee you that's what he's doing right now. I mean, let, let, let's think about it. what else has he got to do at 8 a.m. when he's already done all that from 5:30 on. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah, he doesn't need to worry about calling recruits or watching any tape or any of that getting, stuff. He's got he his feet propped up on the desk, leaning back, <laughs> listening to us morons on here. I don't think we're morons. I think we're giving them good advice. I mean, you know, look, I can get, give me, I'm going to ask God, you tell me, if you could assemble your own staff and just hypothetically be the coach of the Gators, could you go five and seven? You think you could? Oh, honest gosh, question. I don't know. I mean, oh, come on, QB. Uh, just be honest for once. Just say yes, Johnny. I could go five and seven. I can win five games. I can figure out how to beat Tennessee or Kentucky, rather. And I can figure out how to beat Arkansas by not running guys all over the field like madmen, not knowing what to do in the last 30 seconds of a final drive. I think I could do that, John. Yeah. So the answer is yes, you could. Because Okay. I, I, mean, I, I was asking that rhetorically. I, I mean, come on, QB. You coached football before in your life. You, I think you know a little bit about it. Yeah, you'd be a lot cheaper. Than seven, you'd be a lot cheaper than seven and a half billion dollars, too, QB. I don't know about that. Andy says the Vlad Golden kid from the FAU is in the portal. Okay, he's he would be a good uh, addition. So it'll be see. Um, Mike says the only time you have to run in golf is when Gator lunges out of the pond after you. Mike, stay away from the Gators. Stay away from the Gators. Um, 
<laughs> All right, JC. J- yes. JC. Um, I'm laughing let's get at to our Peach Land. I, okay, guy, you want oh. to do a pitch? I got it. Peach so, Land Dental, Gator, Gator Nation's number one source <laughs> for dentistry in Port Charlotte, surrounding areas. Visit them at peachlanddental.com. Large We're going to do some golf picks for the Valero Open in San Antonio next week. It's uh, a tremendous week. Hopefully, I haven't looked at the weather forecast for Augusta, Georgia, but hopefully there's no rain. There's nothing worse than when rain oh, comes in, it softens up the golf course and all that nonsense. It drives me nuts. So, Large Fry says, JC is like one of those movies where a nine-year-old boy gets swapped in a man's body. I've seen movies like that. Um, let's see. Oh, finan- this is David. Financial planning is hard. Does that make it a sport? I mean, dear God, nobody understands that. <laughs> I mean, so, actually, he's, financial he's planning is not that joking. Hard. That's why I make it easier for you, uh, David. Give me a call. Um, okay, so Peachland Dental Time. We're going to go there. Uh, let's see. We are. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let you right. go first. Is Scotty Scheffler playing this week? Should I write him down? <laughs> no, no, QB. He's, ta- he's uh, getting ready for the Masters. This is one of those tournaments where guys who need there's, you know, status. There's bigger, bigger. There's, there's some, a lot of big names in this tournament. There, yeah, no, you're right. I mean, Jordan Spieth has, has really been slumping in the last couple of years. He's playing in this thing. Max Holmes playing this thing. No, I, I agree. Some guys want to play the week before the Masters. At another tournament, but I, I, you know, most of the guys like Nicholson and Johnson and those guys, uh, Brooks Kepka. Somebody said Brooks Kepka was not a threat to win the Masters. It was the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. But uh, you know, those guys are in. They're in George. They're they're walking the course. But I'm going to start it off with Colin Morikawa at the Valero Texas Open. I think he's going to break through at some point in one of these secondary events. He's a major winner, great striker of the ball. Give me Colin Morikawa. All right, you're going to take more cow. I'm going to take the Canadian. This is the kind of tournament Corey Connors yep. plays well in. Yep, yep, good pick. Give me Brian Harmon. I like the way he's hitting it. I think he, uh, you know, he's he's on the leaderboard in a consistent fashion. He's a major winner, having won the British Open. Uh, he'll be very good, I think, at Augusta next week, and I think he's going to play well this week going into it. So I'll take Brian Harmon. Yeah, uh, I will go with Tommy Fleetwood from England. Okay, all right. Tommy Fleetwood, all right. So, let's see. Um, So, we get to the Valero Open, and I've taken two good names. You know, Tyson Alexander played well last week, former Gator, um, up in in Houston, over in Houston. Uh, Let's go with, um, let's go with a guy that, uh, you know, is not a, a common name, but you know, he's, he's consistent at times. Harris English is the guy. Um, I'm going to go with Harris mm-hmm. English here as my third pick. Georgia Bulldog. Florida. He's a Bulldog. A lot of them are out there. You got uh, two, but, you got two Bulldogs on your roster. JP. Well, they're everywhere. QB, these damn Georgia Bulldogs are everywhere out there on the golf tour. They're everywhere. They really are. Uh, my last pick will be Ludwig Oberg. You love that guy from Sweden. I do. You do love him. You are such an international um, follower of golf. Do you watch the European tour? I mean, are you look at are you just (laughs) you sit around? Wake up in the morning and watch the European (laughs) tour. (laughs) You just turn on the golf channel, watch the European tour. uh, uh, You know, whatever it is, uh, Friday and Saturday. That's got to be what you do, QB. That's exactly what I do. Uh, Those are your Peachland Dental. Gator Nation's number one choice for dentistry, Port Charlotte, surrounding areas. Go visit them at peachlanddental.com. All right, so we got a couple of texts that just came in from Chris and Mayaka. He says, golf is absolutely a sport. Far racing, however, is not. I can't look at Tony Stewart and tell me that he is an athlete. Oh, my. Well, I, you know, auto racing, you try getting one of those things. Uh, I know a woman who actually drives in these 24 hour races with a team, and I can't believe what she does. She plays tennis with my wife, and she is unbelievable. To me, you got to be pretty athletic to drive a race car. Uh, thank you, Large Fry. You love me. I love you too. Um, wait, 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 wait a uh, second, JC. You have, you have somebody that plays tennis with your wife that is a yes. race car driver? She is, and she she's on a team. She ride, drives a BMW. Uh, they run those 24-hour races at Daytona. They run the 24 hours at Sebring. She ride, It's the road track racing. And she's one of four drivers. Her name is Kelsey Hill. And she rides uh, – she, she races cars. She's incredible. And she plays tennis. 
out here at uh, Hawkstone and on tour, you know, when they go out on these uh, trips to play tennis, she, she goes with them and she is tremendous. She is one of the most athletic people I've met. She played lacrosse at Colgate, love Kelsey, and she um, drives race cars with a team. She's uh, on a team with three other guys that drive or four other guys. They have a pit crew. She travels constantly around the world. She was at Wimbledon last year because she raced in, in somewhere else in Europe. I think it was in uh, uh, Holland or uh, Belgium or somewhere. I mean, she's a, she's a race car driver, man. So it's kind of neat to know somebody that actually does that. And I can promise you she is as athletic a female as I've ever seen or a person for that matter as I've ever seen. And speaking of athletics, uh, females, how about Caitlin Clark? Uh, you know, you've got Iowa coming up here against UConn. And then South Carolina on the other side. I, I can't wait to watch Iowa play. I'm loading it up on Iowa. That's my team when I go out to Mississippi and hit the sports book. And I'm going to – Be and careful. I'm gonna, Be careful. I know. Paige, Be Be- Be- Paige, Beckers, yeah. Paige Beckers is a stud too now. I, I used to know a Paige Beck here at TV 22. But Paige Beckers is great. But Caitlin Clark is the best there is. She is the best. And she's the best there has been. And I think you carry that when you've got one last chance and she's going to make it happen. What she did to Angel Reese and those dirty ass LSU Tigers. I loved it. And I love the fact that Mulkey lost. And I love the fact that Iowa is playing for something, a championship with Caitlin Clark. She's my favorite player. And I think she's going to win it. I don't care about the other teams. I, I think that's it's, it's exciting as hell for women's basketball to have these studs playing and these girls doing so well and being so famous and, and getting commercials. I love all this stuff. It's It makes the sport much more attractive to me to watch, and um, I can't wait to watch it this week. I'm, uh, Friday and Sunday is when they play, and then we've got the men on Saturday and Sunday. I'm hoping that those two games can be competitive. I think the NC State-Purdue game can. I'm worried about the Alabama-Connecticut game for obvious reasons. So I think we got a lot of great basketball coming up to watch, and I'm going to root like hell for Caitlin Clark and Alabama. And that's how it's going to be. Yep. Speaking of that, Jimmy on the uh, Titan Amar text line says, JC, do you think Bama can keep it close against UConn? If they hit their threes like they did against um, uh, North Carolina and like they did against Clemson, I think it can be close just based on simple math. If you make th- 10 three-pointers in a peer- in the, in a half, let's say, that's 30 points. That's that 30 be- points, JC. Yeah. That's 30 it's points. Be and if you shoot 66% from the three-point line, you will be in the game. You absolutely will. Alabama scores a lot of points. Where they will get in trouble is down low in the post because Klingon's going to kill them. I know this. They could get into foul trouble. That could be a problem. And they could go cold from the outside. That absolutely would be a problem. And they could easily lose by 30. Easily. I mean, when you beat Illinois by 30 points, you're kind of a – you're a you're – a, you're an enigma. That team is as good as it as 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 we all know. We've been talking about UConn for two months, QB. I said it's, it's it's UConn's world, and we're all living in it. But when they can beat somebody by thirty points as good as Illinois and whoever else they play, it almost is it doesn't seem fair. But the one thing Alabama does better than Illinois, and the one thing Alabama does better than probably any team that UConn's played is score points. If they score points, they can keep the game close, maybe inside the spread. But if they miss their shots, if they get into foul trouble, and if Klingon goes off like he probably will, I am not optimistic that Alabama's going to play for a championship. Not at all. I'm going to I'm going to ask you the question that somebody a few days ago, I think, whenever Mike Mike was Mike Morgan was on Monday. Yeah. Somebody sent a text on the Titan of our text line, a lot, a lot. saying, "Would you take?" We're we're assuming. Let's just assume that UConn wins the national title, which I think most okay. people think they are. Right. Would you Would you take the Gators back to back teams oh. over the last two UConn teams? Well, you know, it's different eras. Um, I think you could match them up very equally, though. I mean, the Gator team played great in the post. They had spectacular guard play, and they played defense. That's exactly what UConn is. Great in the post, spectacular guard play, and, you know, a defensive juggernaut. I think there's a lot of similarities. I I don't know. I mean, we're talking about a Gator team. Let's see, this is 17 years ago, uh, and a UConn team today. It's so easy to be more, you know, familiar with what is more recent. But nobody, and I mean nobody, is going to ever discredit anything that the Florida Gators were able to do with Billy Donovan, 
with those wonderful teams that didn't have high expectations when the season started, but ended up just burying these teams in the final four. They buried UCLA. They buried these teams. And, and I think that's kind of what we're seeing with UConn. So to me, it's very even. I, I can't really say one or the other. I'm sorry. Well, it's hard. It's hard to compare because you have two different types of teams because Florida did it with the same starting five and the same supporting cast. Whereas UConn, these two teams have been different because of turnover and graduation and things of that nature. So, yeah. Um, well, it's, it's, listen, they are as blue blood as it gets. And, you know, if they win, it, I think, they're, that? I think they're, the, they're, they're, the, they're at the top of my list. Now, when I, people ask me about the top basketball schools, yeah, it is UConn yeah. and, no matter and what. You, and, you know, think about this. It's not just with the men. That school has done it with the women. I mean, Gino Oriema is the Nick Saban of women's basketball. He is. And and it's he's the greatest ever in women's basketball. So think about that school just as a whole, doing it with both women and men. It's incredible. I mean, this school is in the middle of Nowheresville in Connecticut. You know, not your uh, Hawaiian tropical vacation spot there. So they, they find a way. They get great coaches, great coaches. Calhoun was a great coach. The guy that followed him was pretty damn good. And this guy, Hurley, is turning into a, a really – is a superstar right now. So I, I think everything about UConn is great. I just hope they lose. <laughs> That's all I can tell yeah. you. Buck says the closest game they've had in the tournament in the last two years – that they won by 13 points. That's Correct. I, I mean, they're going to so. probably beat Alabama. I would say if all things go the way I think they're going to go and with the troubles I think Alabama will have, you know, it's an 18 to 20 point game. I, I don't know why Vegas continues to get murdered uh, laying these numbers with UConn. These numbers are too low. They're just too low. And all the people who love to take favorites are getting rich on UConn. So, I mean, first half bet, full uh, – you know, full game bet, you know, total points, all of that. It, UConn's blowing the numbers away. And Vegas, for some reason, can't seem to adjust to it. And I think they'll, you know, everybody believes they're going to win by, you know, more than 11 and a half points because that's where the number is and that's where the money's going. So, All right, Andy has a question on Facebook Live brought to you by Mel Law. I hope it doesn't and happen. He asking, he's, asking, he's asking you, but I'm going to answer it as well. He says, if you okay. need a center, do you go with Klingon or Edie? I go with I go, Klingon, I Klingon immediately. I Klingon, Oh, a Klingon, a hundred percent. Now Zach Eady's the player of the year in college basketball, but Klingon has—I I mean, I think he's just got a, a better game down there. I, I think he's a little bit more um, more versatile. But Eady is the only guy I think in this Final Four that can, you know, post him up and match up with him. There's nobody else on either of these teams that can Alabama or NC State that can match up with Klingon. Klingon's going to do what he's going to do. You just have to outscore UConn. I, I, that's the only way. Uh, we just got a text on the Titan MR text line from Roger. He says, JT, speaking yeah. of the vehicles being driven by the Gator football players, what's being driven in Tuscaloosa? Do you know? No, uh, absolutely. And I agree. But, you know, ETN with his Bentley in, in Athens, Georgia? By the way, I drove No, a... no, no. He, he, was on, he was in an Audi. Uh, oh, DJ okay. Lagway has a Bentley. Oh, okay, whatever the hell it is. But, you know, this guy that you're looking at had a 1979 Chevy Nova with a 420, uh, with a 305 V8. I had a white hardtop, white interior seats with uh, seatbelt and bench seats, and my Chevy Nova was, was fast. It was fast. Well, JT, I, JT I'll tell you right the difference now, is I, you're, you're, you're not an athlete. We're asking, do you know what's being driven by the athletes in I, Alabama? We don't care I, what you drove. It's the same damn thing. I, look, it's the same thing that they're driving here, that they're driving in Athens, what difference does it make? These people are making big financial mistakes buying these cars at their age when they are depending on their athletic career to give them generational wealth, okay? Don't depend on that. If you get paid a lot of money at that age, you need to procure it properly, and that does not include buying a stinking Audi, okay? Work – Go buy an Audi when you get that guaranteed contract from the De uh, Detroit Lions. Go do it then, but don't do it in college. That's that's my advice. You guys go and do what you want with it, but nobody's going to get sympathy from me. When, what's, when what's, they crazy, blow what's crazy? What's crazy in towns like Tuscaloosa, Gainesville, and Athens? Yeah. When you see a ve when you see a vehicle like that, you, you know, know who it it's is. a college athlete. You know if who it is. If you're if you if you're at Southern Cal. 
oh. driving that vehicle. Everybody yeah. in the damn town of LA has those vehicles. So it's a, uh, I, gosh, I, I don't know why in the world they'd want those cars in Gainesville I mean, think about, or any of those, can you think those about, can, can you think of a Rolls Royce, uh, uh, you know, cruising down, uh, it, uh, State Road 12 in Starkville by Davis Wade Stadium. Look at that Rolls Royce. Look at him. Where, where'd that come from? There in Starkville, Mississippi. Uh, it's funny to me. It's just, but it's bad decision making. I think these kids need better advice. Now, listen, maybe they're getting good advice. They probably are, although I'm not always so sure of that. <laughs> they may think they are, but they got to make better decisions. And I think a lot of them probably are making the decisions. We only hear about or talk about the ones that are getting flashy and showy with their newfound wealth. But again, an athlete's life is short lived and you must plan for it in, in case it doesn't go the way you think or want it to go. And when you get all this money, call me and I will make sure your future is secure. <laughs> I mean, my God. We had an infomercial sure. going. Well, it's no, I'm just saying, I, I think it's, you know, you got an opportunity here. I'm giving you guys an opportunity, these kids, but uh, we'll see what happens. Well, you're, you're right, because the majority of these kids ain't even going to sniff the National Football League. No, they're not going to sniff it. And God almighty, I mean, what if they get hurt? I mean, injuries are, you know, I mean, Cornelius Ingram, you know, uh, Ed Chester. Really, think about it. This could happen to any of them. And I just don't want it to, but they play a violent sport. In basketball, too, you can, you can hurt yourself. It's just one of those things where I think better decisions. We should we should uh, be a little bit more um, thoughtful of the decisions that are made when they when they just fall into this money, literally. Um, yeah. And by the way, Patrick, no, I cannot drive a stick. I never wanted to drive a stick. I don't like driving sticks. I spill things when I drive an automatic, for that matter. I never eat fast food in the car because it ends up all over the seat and in between the seat and on the floorboard. So that's the way it is, Patrick. Thank you for the question. And no, I didn't drive a Yugo, but I did drive a Suzuki once. And I put a 374-pound man, a good friend of mine, in that Suzuki. And he was so large that when we got to where we were going, I had to literally kick him out the door. I had to nudge him. You know who I'm talking about, QB. And so I've gone through the ringer with cars, okay? I'm not a big, flashy car guy, but I did drive a Suzuki. <laughs> okay. All right, before we get you out of here, JC, a text on the Titan Mark text line from Brady and, and wants to know, who would be your all-time favorite foursome to play with? Uh, who, who would be mine? Yeah, who would you pick to play – if you could pick four golfers, to, you'd be the fifth to play golf with, like like famous people, not just Slappy's Hail Plantation. Okay. You're talking about would, who, who would your four be? Well, one of them would be Derek Jeter. Another one would be um, Tony Rowell. He's a former Gator offensive lineman. Another one would be um, Cal Ripken Jr. And another one would be – uh, let's go with uh, Aaron Donald. So you didn't pick anybody to play golf that are golfers? No, because you like said my favorite golfers. people. Now, if you want me to pick my favorite golfers, no, I didn't. Say, I didn't say that. I, that's, oh. We'll talk about that another time. We got to go to get Patricia Gardner okay. from the Game right, Quarterback Club. But you, you butchered, you butchered his question. By the way, uh, that's <laughs> JC on the Titan Hotline. Sorry. We'll take a quick timeout. When we come back, we'll be joined by Patricia Garzon. Uh, the Gainesville Quarterback Club, letting us know what's going on there. You're watching and listening to Pot Up with Matthews in the morning. We want to take this moment to thank our sponsors who keep the show going and pay the bills. Our premium sponsors are Crown Prevention Security Systems, large enough to serve you, small enough to care. Titan MRI, Gainesville's only locally owned and operated MRI facility. Melden Law, the only official injury and accident law attorneys of the Florida Gators. Peach Land Dental, Gator Nation's first choice for dentistry in Port Charlotte. QC Kinetics, live pain-free with QC Kinetics. Campus USA, put some star power to work in your financial life with Campus USA Credit Union. Comfort Temp, comfort is our business, peace of mind is our promise. Dave & Buster's, eat, drink, play, watch. Radware, your local provider of promotional products, uniforms, and apparel. Our gridiron sponsors are Auto ER, UF Bookstores, Silverback Concrete, Ruse Ogre State Farm Insurance, Radware, F45, Quality Plumbing, 
Our touchdown sponsors are Adams Ribs, Gator Domino's, Celebrate Primary Care, Gator Bait Media, Okito America, Style Cuts, Ironwood Golf Course, Big Mills Cheese Steak, McDonald's of Gainesville, 84 Lumber, Dowling Signs, Baker's Sporting Goods, Silver Q Billiards and Sports Bar. If you're interested in promoting your business on the show, call Freddie at 352-284-3733. If you like what we're doing here, make sure to follow us and support the businesses that support us. Hi there, this is Coach Steve Spurrier, and I want to let you know that by popular demand, Spurrier's Gridiron Grill's delicious brunch is now served in a premium buffet. You have spoken, we have listened, and we're now serving Gainesville's only elevated buffet complete with an omelet station, ginger sage chicken sausage, shredded short rib, and of course, our chicken and waffles. Plus, you can enjoy bottomless mimosas and Bloody Marys. So join us every Saturday and Sunday from 11 to 3 for the best brunch in town. Welcome back to the Crime Prevention Security System Studios. Large enough to serve you, small enough to care. Ruse Ogre State Farm Hall. This is a team of dedicated insurance professionals ready to help life go right with the right insurance options for you and your family. Visit ogreinsurance.com. Give them a call at 352 240 1779. We're going to go back to the Titan MR hotline, courtesy of Comfort Temp. And we're joined by Trisha Garzon from the JAG Agency. She's the first ever female board member of the Gainesville Quarterback Club. Good morning, Trisha. How are you doing? Good morning, Shane. Thanks for having me. I'm doing great. Yeah, absolutely. Ready for some spring, um, some spring football action. Yeah, no doubt about that. First of all, let's talk about uh, what's going on at the Gainesville Quarterback Club. I know Coach Napier is going to be speaking there next week, I believe. Just kind of give everybody, uh, let them know what y'all schedule's like and what's going on. Okay, great. Yeah, so right now we are in our off-season, so we meet bi-monthly. In-season, we meet weekly every Tuesday at the Best Western uh, Gateway Grand here in Gainesville. So uh, right now, since we're off-season, we'll meet April 9th, which is next Tuesday, uh, Coach Billy Napier. We are the first club to get him every single year before he starts any kind of speaker series. So we're always excited to get that initial insight. Um, and right now we have a trial membership going. So if you'd like to join us for Coach Napier and then also for our second meeting of the off season, which will be June 4th, that's Chris Doring and Peter Burns from SEC Now. So that's only $150. That includes your meal. We start at 530 at the Best Western Gateway Grand with happy hour. Then we have a, a full meal and the program usually starts around 7. We also have, uh, prior to the speaker coming on, we always have great insight from either Pat Dooley or Andy Staples. So there's always great insider information. Of course, then our elite speaker, it's a good time because there's Gator fans everywhere. Former players visit us from time to time. And it's just a, a really good way to enjoy Gator football. We kick off, you know, we have this off season kicking off the spring game. And then, you know, June kind of gives us a little summer summer beat there until we can get into the season and that's when things really kick off um in addition to our meetings members also we have a, a golf tournament an annual golf tournament we have an annual gala we have tailgates before all the home games including our spring game so again if you you're ready to join now we have a spring game tailgate coming up everything's included we have barbecue we have drinks um entertainment and everything we've got a great parking free parking you can park right there and walk to the spring game so uh, this is this is a great time to join. And for $150 for two meetings, you can't beat that. Yeah, for sure. Uh, some questions about the Gainesville Quarterback Club. I've spoken in Little Rock, Huntsville, Atlanta, Memphis, different places at different touchdown clubs and quarterback clubs. Uh, is the Gainesville Quarterback Club mostly Gators? Because those ones that I've spoken at around the country, it's kind of a collection of all different colleges and universities. Are y'all mostly basically Gator stuff? We are, Shane. We are the oldest actual Gator Booster Club in the world. We predate Gator Boosters, Inc. So we're talking about 1950. It was established here in Gainesville by some prominent local businessmen. You know, they were just, they loved their, their Gators. They loved Gator football, but, you know, we just weren't having any success. And uh, they were actually hindsight now. They knew better. They, they were like, we got to get some money together. We got to figure this out. And and now knowing they started this in the 1950s, it led to our first success as a program, you know, with Ray Graves and then our first Heisman Trophy winner, Steve Spurrier in 1966. So that group of local Gainesville businessmen that were Florida Gator diehard fans really kind of kicked off this whole, you know, University of Florida football program 
craziness, which, you know, I'm a lifelong dater as well, born and raised, went to the University of Florida, my husband as well. Both my kids go there now. It's just in our blood. We literally bleed orange and blue. And that's what these folks did. And we were just excited that we've been, been able to keep it going for this long. We got a text on the Titan Amore text line from Jonathan. He wants to know, has the quarterback club been approached about NIL? Um, that's kind of an interesting question. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So currently we endow a scholarship at the University of Florida for a football player. We have also endow a scholarship for a Florida high school athlete as player of the year. So that's currently where our dues go and that's what we support. Obviously, with the scope of things today, um, we are looking at the NIL as a, a potential way that we start to divert some of the funds that we're raising. We have had uh, Florida Victorious come speak with us. We are in private talks with them as well to see, you know, how can we better, where's our, our money better put, right? So um, that's definitely something that we're working on. I think it's, if it ends up to be a split maybe at some point where we, you know, keep our scholarship endowment and then maybe we get more towards the NIL. But again, this is a great way if you're unsure of whether, you know, how you want to navigate that, the club can help help you do that. So just being a part of the club, you know, getting access to everything that we have access to, and then knowing that you are furthering that mission. Yeah, another text here from Jim wants to know, do y'all still meet on Tuesday nights? And do you know who your speakers are going to be for this, this fall? Yes, yeah, so we meet Tuesday night still. Uh, again, starts at 5.30 with the happy hour. Buffet usually opens around six and the program starts about seven. We try to get everybody out by about 8.30. And again, this is at the Best Western Gateway Grand. Um, we do have our speakers uh, pretty much lined up for this year and we've got some good ones on there. Coach Jan Mullen's gonna come back. Of course, we said Coach Napier, Billy, uh, Chris Doring, Peter Burns, uh, Laura Rutledge, and uh, I'm trying to think of some other ones off the top of my head, but we've got some good ones coming up. The full schedule, you can see everything at quarterbackclub.org. Again, that's quarterbackclub.org, and uh, the full calendar is up there. We've got some great folks coming up, and uh, it's always a good time. You never know who's going to pop in. Uh, Andy's question here, and I'm sure he could look at it on, on, on the website, but he wants to know how much does a regular annual membership cost? Okay, regular annual, annual membership is $6.99. We also have court, and that's for one person, and it's over 18 meetings, plus the gala, plus the golf tournament. So, you know, you do the math, you spend $50 to go out to dinner anywhere and it's paid for itself. Only you've gotten the program, you've helped, you know, the Gator football program and, and all that kind of good stuff. So it really pays for itself. And then you get to hang out with tons of other Gator fans and, you know, meet new people and, and it's a good time. We also have out of town memberships available. So it's, it's via Zoom. You can get one of those for only $199 a year. And so anybody that wants to tune in via Zoom all over the, the nation, they can. We, we record each one of those meetings, but you can only get in if you're a member. Like this is not public, it's completely private. Uh, that's what we love about it. What happens in the room stays in the room. So our speakers, including coaching staff and admins, I mean, they're really able to offer us a little bit more insight than, you know, is able to leave the room. And our members, I think they try to, you know, maintain that integrity. So it works, you know, we love being able to have that one-on-one -on -one with coaches, admins, and of course, players and, and personalities. Yeah, uh, we got a Facebook live here saying Jimbo speak, uh, Jimbo Fisher is speaking this year. That should be quite interesting. He is. He is. Yeah, we're excited to have him coming in. Um, we do try to sometimes when we're playing opposing teams, uh, you know, if we don't have a, if we if we think a speaker might align and it might be interesting, you know, we'll bring them in. We had uh, Phil Fulmer has come. Uh, we've had uh, Lou Holtz. So, you know, anybody that, that we feel is valuable can offer some insight to our members and that our members might enjoy. And they have all been phenomenal. Uh, another text on the Titan Amar text line from Greg. He says, does the quarterback club take an annual trip to one of the road games? We do. Yes, we uh, usually do two a year. So we do Florida, Georgia is always a given. And then this year, our away trip, of course, is going to be Texas. Like, who doesn't want to go to Austin? Oh, yeah, that's yeah. a good one for sure. And that, our trips include. Um, you, do, you know, you do pay for them, but they include your ticket because we have access to the tickets as Gator Boosters. And, um, of course, we're, we're putting airfare and, and hotel rooms and all that kind of stuff in our package. Very cool. All right. Before we let you go, once again, let everybody know again uh, what they, you know, for the partial membership or trial membership, what they can do and what time is Coach Napier going to be there next week? Great. Thank you. So, yes, you can either go to our website, quarterbackclub.org. You can join via the website. 
You can email me if you've got any questions at membership at quarterbackclub.org. Uh, or you could just show up next Tuesday, April 9th at the Best Western Gateway Grand here in Gainesville, 530. We'll get you all signed up. I'll be there at the welcome table, and, and we look forward you know, to hopefully bringing some new members in. Coach typically will get there right around program start, so he should be there by 7. But again, come enjoy the happy hour at 530. Get your meal. you know, Enjoy that, and then the program will start around 7 o'clock. Good stuff, Trish. Appreciate you joining us, and uh, hopefully it'll be a, a great football season. Thanks for coming on. That's what we're hoping. Thank you, Shane. Appreciate you. Yeah, that's Trisha Garzon from the JAG Agency, and she is the first ever female board member of the Gainesville Quarterback Club. So go check that out. That club's been around a long time. They used to meet out at the Country Club, and then when that shut down, they've moved out to the Best Way Grand. So uh, if you want to get involved, it's a good group to do, uh, to be a part of. Go check them out. Uh, a couple more texts here on the Titan Amar text line from Willie. Willie wants to know, Shane, I heard you talking about the quarterbacks in the NFL draft coming up. I know you didn't pick one, but do you have a favorite one? <laughs> oh, man. Like I said, it's, uh, I'm not sure between Caleb Williams, Drake May, and Jaden Daniels who I would pick. Uh, I think they're all have unique skill sets. Um, Drake May may be the better thrower, natural thrower. Caleb Williams is a guy that can run around, make plays. Reminds me a lot of Patrick Mahomes. And then Jaden Daniels uh, really became a great thrower of the football. We all saw his running ability. I just think he's a better version of Lamar Jackson. So time will tell, but I, I, I'd have to, I got to think about it. I'll, I'll give you an answer on that question as it gets closer to the draft, I promise. Uh, if you miss it again, baseball won last night against FAMU. They traveled to Missouri this weekend. Softball, huge series against LSU. It'd be a great weekend to go out, check out the girls at KDC Shoal Presley Stadium. Hope you enjoyed today's program. Have a great day, folks. Take care.